We're going to start today with how to set up a WMS enabled warehouse. This is going to be a slightly high level on the setups that are required. There's a bunch of different configurations you can do to customize this. So first, let's start off with the inventory setup. And we'll go to this page. Okay, so for the inventory setup, crucial thing we would like to add here is the numbering series. So BaseNav has a number series set up for these fields. We just have to drill down into the list of number series codes and assign them. So more than likely, if you do not have any current WMS enabled locations, you would need to add the following. So the inventory put away number series, the posted inventory put away number series, number series for picks, movements, and internal movements. And again, these are already defined. All you have to do is drill down into the list of the numbers series, and they are set up in here. So the way this is going to work is when the system generates a warehouse document, it knows what to use for the document number. So we have all of those set up. Next, we need to define our bin type codes. So let's take a look at those. So I've set up pretty much the standard ones for most installations. And what bin type codes enable us to do is it defines what you can use that bin for. So for instance here, we have a bin type code of pick. So we can see that right here, we're only going to use that for picking activities. For example, would not use that for a purchase order to be put away. This would just be for picks. We got pallet picks, just different type of pick. Our put aways. So again, this is just for basically receiving purchase orders and putting them away. We can kind of go through the use of just put aways. Your most common would be put pick. So you're going to use these bins for putting away and picks. Your QC type, basically these do not have a type assigned to them, and they would be used for production bins and adjustments. And then, of course, we have ones for receiving and shipping. So we need to set these up prior to working on setting up our location so we can use these. So next, we're going to take a look at our location cards. So we'll go down here to locations. And I am using a standard Coronas database. So there are many locations already set up. But I am going to walk through setting up a new location that we are going to set up as WMS and so from our location list, let's create a new location. So let's call this our Atlanta warehouse. And you can give it a street name. And an address. And on the right side, of course, you know, this is not an in-transit location. This is one of our main warehouses that we use for shipping. And there's a few other fields in here that are actually customized for a, another mod. So these would not be in the normal database. But we're just going to go over the fields that would be required. So you give it a phone number. And I'll just make up one here. Okay. All right, so next we're going to take a look at our warehousing tab. And this is how we're going to configure our warehouse to be WMS enabled. So what is WMS enabled? Basically, we're going to build some logic into the system to where it's going to direct us to go to certain bins to assist us in the picking process. And it'll also direct us to certain bins for the put away process for receiving. Now, NAB's highly configurable. So without fully WMS enabled, we can actually pick which documents that we want to enable this location to use. So for directed put away and pick, we're going to use all of them. So we're going to require a received document for purchase orders, a shipment document for sales orders. We're going to require the put aways. The put away worksheet, as again, is an option. We can go over that later in more detail. 
but basically a put away worksheet would allow you to combine multiple purchase orders into one put away. But we want the system to do a one to one match. So every time a purchase order is received, it will automatically create a put away. So we're going to leave this unchecked. We will require a pick. And bin mandatory has to be checked in order for this box to be unlocked so we can check it. So we're going to use bin mandatory, and this is the final button that will actually make it WMS enabled. On a side note, if you do set up a location with all of these boxes checked, and you do go through the process of shipping an order, which creates the shipment and the pick, once those documents have been created, you can no longer actually turn this check flag off. So it is crucial to fully understand which locations you want to set this up with. So next, now we have our warehousing tab set up. Notice to the right, we do have some fields that will help us calculate some fields on the sales order and the purchase order. So we do have the outbound warehouse handling time. This is added to the shipment date of the sales order, and that would give you the planned shipment date. Take that into account. We do have inbound warehouse handling time. This is added to the purchase order date and the lead time calculation, and that will take into account and give you the planned receipt date. Again, this is kind of high level. We are going to enable cross docking, but that's a feature that we can set up to basically during a put away, we can give it a time period to look at sales shipments to see if any of that inventory could actually go in that shipment before we put it away. And it would basically skip the step of putting it away and it would move it directly to the shipping docks. All right, so next we have our bins tab. And this is where the system's gonna build the logic to pick certain bins to use an operation. So before we can assign these bins, we need to do some more configuration. So think of the location as the entire footprint of our warehouse. And then we're going to have to start segregating it into smaller pieces. So our physical location, the address is Atlanta. Next, we want to divide our warehouse into specific areas where specific tasks are performed. And we're going to call those zones. So in our zones, we're going to go ahead and create some new ones here. And again, there's tons of ways we can configure this. I'm just going to give you the basic setup that the majority of people use. So we have an assembly zone. And this is where we use those bin type codes that we set up. So assembly is going to be a type QC. And we can assign them bin rankings. So bin rankings really apply to certain zones that actually have quite a few bins set up in those. So bin rankings would prioritize those bins. But some of these zones are only going to have one bin. So for right now, the zone ranking is not going to be as important. So we're just uh, doing this as 100 right now. So then we'll set up adjustment. And that's QC. And we will set up a picking zone. And picking zone would be type put pick. Use it for both operations. production and this will be type QC and have a QC zone So as far as our bin rankings, usually your picking zone is going to have the highest. 
course, shipping and receiving, you don't really want the system to try to use those bins to pull out of, so we'll reduce these down to, let's say, 50. QC zone, be even lower, so we'll maybe give that a ranking of 40 or priority. And production, we can say, would be 80. So the reason I like to make sure that we have the zone ranking set up is because these will copy down to the bins that we're going to set up within these zones. So now that we have our zones, we need to divide our warehouses even further. So we have the location, the address, we have the zones, the type of activities, and within those zones, we're going to have a finite space, which can be represented as a bin, a shelf, a rack, a place to park a pallet, but it's a basically a specific space in our warehouse. So next we'll assign those bins. So we'll give it a code. And notice that the bin ranking copies down to the bin level. Now I did want to mention that for our bins, with zones that's going to have multiple bins, it would be a good idea that in the code of the bin we put a little structure in it to help identify where it is in the warehouse. So as we assign to our picking zone, we can actually get creative and have the code represent maybe which aisle it pertains to, which side of the aisle, which level from the base all the way to the top, what position on the rack, and so on. So we can build that logic into the code. Therefore, when it shows up on a document for the warehouse worker to see, he notices the code and actually it means logically exactly where it's at. So we'll set up one bin for receiving. Now again, you can have multiple bins, but the system's only gonna let us define one default. So we just need one for each right now. So let's go to ship a one. And we'll give this a QC bin. So production is a little bit different. The system's going to help us for in a production capacity, direct us for production in and production out. Now the prod in and a prod. So picking zone, this is normally where we'd store most of our bins. So this is where we could actually use the nomenclature for the code to help define exactly in the warehouse where it is. But for demo purposes, let's keep this kind of simple. So we'll just call this bin 001. Maybe we'll have more than one. Bin 002. And adjustment, again, we'll just need one bin for this. So let's call this just zero one. And assembly is kind of like production. Let's go ahead and set up a symbol in and a symbol out. All right. So now we've defined our bins. And there are some tools to help us create bins. Sometimes it can be kind of tedious. There is a bin creation worksheet that would basically let us define the starting code and the end of the code. And it would basically create one bin for every spot in between those codes. So we can kind of mass update the system. You do have the ability to use spreadsheets to import bins. And we can also do it manually, just like I showed you. So now that we have our bins, we have our zones. We can go back to our location card, like this a little larger here for you. So now we can start defining these. So our receive bin, our shipping bin, and our production bin. Adjustment bin.
and our assembly unit. So again, this is what the system is going to do. So from the sales order, I'm going to have to create a warehouse shipment. So the shipment document is going to look here to find what is the default shipment bin code all items need to be in to go out the door. So next we have our bin policies. We can actually define if special equipment would be needed. We can also set up some more fields on the bin to dictate how much this bin will hold as far as cubage. This field right here will basically tell us, hey, don't check the capacity. I just put that for reference. I can put anything away I want. Allow more than max capacity, you'll just get a warning saying that you're over. Or you can actually lock the system down and prohibit you. If it's over the max capacity, you'll have to actually define another bin. You will have to set up a put away template code. So I've set up a few of these, show you what the basic one looks like. Just give me one second here. So let's take a look at standard template code. So this is the logic that we're going to tell the system to use when generating a put away document. So it'll tell us to take it out of the receiving bin. And this is the logic it will use to find what bin to put it away in. So this is a pretty standard configuration here. So what the system will do is when it generates the put away, it's going to look at the first line of logic here and it's going to try to match the criteria that has been checked. So it'll try to find a fixed bin with the same item in it, same unit of measure, and it's less than the actual capacity. If it can't match all of these, it goes to the next line, which is a little less restrictive, and it tries to match these and so on. So again, these are pretty standard there. And you'll find these in a standard Cronus database. So next, since we've defined this, now that we have WMS enabled, we can no longer directly do adjustments in our item journal. We are first going to have to use a warehouse item journal. So since we have to use this new type of journal, let's go ahead and set up journal batches that point to this new location. So we can go to our warehouse journal templates. Here we go. So these are the standard templates that we're going to have to create. I've already created them since we have limited time. So we're going to have one for adjustments, physical inventory, and reclass. But what we can actually do is inside of these, if we go to batches, we're going to have to set up a new batch name for every new location that's WMS enabled. So in this Corona database, there are already two warehouses. Let's go ahead and set up a new one. So again, we can still call it default. And we can change this to our Atlanta location. And we can also define the default number series. And this will fill in the warehouse journal number series for the document. So we'd want to set up one of these for each one of our journal types. One of the last things we need to do is once we set up these new locations is add our warehouse employees. So we'll go to our warehouse employee list. And if you don't have a WMS enabled location, these are probably blank. But basically you're just going to bring in the username, you're going to assign a location, and you're going to assign it as a default location. If you do not set the user up in this table, it will not let you view these new warehouse documents. So again, just pull in your username, location would be Atlanta, and just mark it as default. So that's for every employee that's going to be using this warehouse. If you're setting up more than one location as a warehouse employee, only one location can be marked as default, but you can bring in more than one location. And then lastly, you are going to have to set up your inventory posting groups with this new location. So if you go to inventory posting setup, you 
So notice that we have a place for location, the inventory posting group, and we can attach our GL accounts. So it looks like here we only have three different inventory posting groups. So we'd have to set up three new rows, each for Atlanta, each for a posting group, and assign the GL accounts. Otherwise, it would prevent you from posting these orders. So that covers pretty much the basic setup of a WMS-enabled location.